to go live. Hello and welcome! This is my first ever video vlog. I'm Stephanie and this is Stephanie B. Creativity. <laughs> I hope that you are having a fantastic day. <laughs> and I'm having, you know, first ever video vlog uh, issues. I left the sound on. <laughs> so if you are new here, I'm Stephanie. I have been a creator all of my life. I have been a knitter and crocheter, an embroiderer, weaver, spinner, all those things, all my life. But I learned to knit and I learned to crochet by hand when I was in grade school. So back when I was eight, I learned to crochet. And when I was 10, I learned to knit. And then I did those things on and off in the, um, in my junior high, high school years, I went to embroidery and cross stitch. And then after I got married and had a baby, I went back to knitting and crocheting. And then it's just been something that I've done on and off, you know, for many years. This past, uh, right after Christmas, my husband got me a knitting machine. Actually, the little one that's over there. <laughs> we got the little Centro plastic toy knitting machine and I made stuff, you know, I made little toys and things and, and had a lot of fun, but it was not as satisfactory. I wanted to make some bigger stuff. So I started making some, uh, making some stuff. So it's been about five weeks and in my first two weeks, I knit a sweater. This is on my YouTube channel here. So, oh, some admin stuff. If you see anything in this vlog that you particularly enjoy, want to learn how to make, many of these projects are actually listed down below in the description box. I've already got videos up on the channel for them. And I'll try and mention that as I'm going along, what things have videos and what things, if you want to learn how to make it, let me know because I've got some stuff on the table here that I've made but not done videos on. You know, it's one of those things. And I'm, I'm having a hard time here because I, I put my camera up in front of me and I think I need to move over a little bit. There we go. <laughs> so we're in my studio. This is my knitting studio, my art studio. I do other art too. So I am, I'm going to move the microphone so you can hear me. I am a um, art teacher here on YouTube. I've been doing that for about six years. I have another channel. It's deliberately creative and I teach drawing and painting over on that channel and a lot of doodling right now because that's really where my heart is. But on here, I'm doing all things yarn, fiber, string, thread. Uh, you know, there might be some books being sewn. I don't know. But right now I want to show you a few of the things that I've finished, a few of the things that I'm working on, and, you know, maybe some of my plans for the future. Right now, you learned about me, you'll know I have another channel, how long I've been doing this stuff. Right up front, I don't think that knitting machines are cheating. I don't think that anybody should be put down or put in um, in a place of lesser skill or knowledge because they choose to use a knitting machine. I've had some comments on my channel that, uh, you know, from people who have as much experience as I've got my whole life, I've been knitting and crocheting and all of those things. And I'm really enjoying the knitting machine because it gets me to the the part uh, that I really enjoy, which is the construction of something. And the knitting machine helps me get to that more quickly. Yes, it is limited. The, the circular knitting machines only have 48 needles 
or 22 needles or 32 needles or 40 needles, but you're pretty much limited to 48 as your maximum size. Uh, and that's working in a tube. So you end up with a flat fabric that's only about 11 inches wide if you leave it in a tube. And let me see, is that right? 11 inches? No, seven inches wide, seven, seven and a half inches wide. Um, and if you do it in a flat panel, you've got 15 inches wide. That's, that's what you've got but there's so many things we can do with that. And so here we go. I'm going to move my camera up just a little and step back. So this is my cardigan sweater. I did the knitting, the ribbing on the machine, all of the panels on the machine. I did all of the stitching. So we've got mattress stitching doop, doop, doop. right, right under here is mattress stitched together. So, you know, and if you're here, please introduce yourself and let me know <laughs> because I see that somebody else has been here. I, <laughs> but I'm just going to keep talking. So this is my sweater. This does have a video. It's my number one video on the channel right now. And it is probably because I made this whole sweater in less than eight hours, two weeks after I had my, actually two weeks after I had my first knitting machine, which is the the little Centro right here. Ooh, it's bright. There we go. Anyway, the little central machine. I made toys with that. And then within a week, my husband had already bought me. I really wanted to do some clothes and things like that. Second, next up, after I did the sweater, I did do some toys. Here, let's go to the desk camera. Hey, Mary O'Neill, welcome. So glad that you're here. Yeah, this is a different kind of live stream, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do here is go to the desk camera and there. So on the desk camera, I need to move my stuff, these things out of the way. We've got the some of my toys and such hey gina welcome welcome all right so i am going to really quick here and hey gina i'm going to go ahead and add you as a moderator even though i don't think we're going to have any issues because you know it's all friends here but i I made this little, this little guy. He's a hand puppet. He's a cover for containers. He's, he's my little polar bear, teddy bear lovey. And uh, very soft, made with brushed, brushed acrylic yarn so it can be washed. There we go. All right. So finished object the teddy bear lovey. And then I did the pocket pals, my little knitted toys, the little pocket pal toy and the teddy bear, the, the lovey and the little pocket pals. Those have videos on my channel already. Thanks, Gina. Yeah. Um, I think they're adorable too. <laughs> Let's see here. There we go. And, uh, yeah. So we've got, now I'm getting confused here. I just moved something on my screen and it, and it confused me. <laughs> there we go. I'll just put that back. So is the sound good guys? Ah, so yeah. Anyway, I've got these. These are on my, on my channel already. The, um, the split brim beanie, this. 
is so fun. Here, let's flip back to the other camera for a minute. So this one, because my, my, I can't keep myself from doing things. If somebody asks a question in a group that I'm in and they, they can't find a tutorial, I'm going to figure it out and make the tutorial. <laughs> so there was a person in a group that I, on the, um, on an Addy, um, circular sewing machine group, and they had said that they wanted a pattern for a hat that looked like this, that um, was hand knitted, but they didn't want to do hand knitting. They wanted to do it on the uh, circular knitting machine. So I was like, well, I can figure that out. So this has a split back in the brim, the ribbing was all done on the machine, and then the chunky um, braids were actually made by taking yarn, just standard worsted weight yarn, and basically making really long chain with it. Uh, so you had three strands at the time, and then you could chain that. It's really cool. So if you're interested in that, all of the steps are in the video for the um, ribbed brim beanie with braids. Yeah. So um, let's see here. What else? What else? Oh, not on my. Now that's on my channel. They, these are not on my channel. These are my furry legs. <laughs> I got some of the Huga yarn at uh, Joanne and it has this sort of almost silky type of effect to it. And these are just tube socks. They're bed socks or slipper socks, house socks, um, mittens in a pinch. <laughs> if you needed a mitten really quick, you could do, you know, no thumb type mitten. But, uh, but yeah, this yarn, that Huga yarn, H-Y-G-G-E yarn is so soft. So, so soft. And, um... Very warm, actually. I was really surprised by that. I've made now. This is not on my on my um, switchback. <laughs> switchback. So I made a kind of um squash colors, <laughs> like pumpkin and uh, butternut squash. This is a twisted head head wrap, and it was made on the small. A 22 pin knitting machine and then I did a I I did a drop stitch two stitches drop stitch the full length and then picked it back up knitting it knitting multiple strands together to get this really pretty braid going around yeah and then let's see here Oh, now I do spin yarn also, uh, spin wool into yarn. And I had spun some hand-painted, um, some hand-painted wool. I can't remember where I got the, um, the hand-dyed wool from, but, uh, because it's been a couple years, <laughs> but I made this really pretty knitted hat and this was two strands of yarn being held together so it was um someplace over on the other sh other side of the room but it was two strands it was a strand of this really very orangey orange reds and yellows and then a strand of this really brown and it's very interesting how uh, when you're working with the knitting machine and you're putting the yarn in, how it will change, you know, its orientation, the, a lot more of the brown showed up on the outside of the hat and a lot more of the orange showed up on the inside. And I think that was a matter of, you know, the manipulating of the yarn while you're putting it through the, through the little guide 
I probably wasn't twisting it or, you know, twirling it as much. And then, um, then I started playing with, well, if I flipped over, would I get more of one color on the outside than the other side? And yeah, it's very interesting how that worked out. So that's another finished. Not on the, not on the channel. It's just a, um, that's just a beanie that I made for myself. This one is not on the channel either. This is a beanie that the, um, the brim is flipped up inside and stitched. But the top is only single layer. I find that the top of my head gets really super, super warm really fast. And I was able to keep my ears nice and warm here. But isn't that the cutest little hat? I really like this. When I was stitching the nose on and the eyes on, I, I, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if we can zoom in enough so that you can see. I actually, yeah, it's really hard. I actually wove. So I went across one direction and then I, you know, like I went across horizontally and then I worked back sort of diagonally going back up the nose like this. And that made it so that it could um, be woven in and over and under going back and forth. Isn't that sweet? And I did the same thing with the eyes and it makes them really nice and solid on here. So this is a very soft. This yarn is the Joanne um, Super Twist or Joanne Twist. And this is a Heather Brown color. So there we go. And... Um, so yeah, if you want to comment and you're not uh, not subscribed, hit the subscribe button so that you can comment. I don't have a delay set on it. So if you want to leave me a comment um, on the in the chat, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Um, I'd love to have you stick around. Stay subscribed if you, you know want to come back and hang out and chat. I made sure and put right up in the title, this is a chatty type of chat. Ch chat bleh, chatty type of show boy all of my words that's really what I want to say all the words anyhow so that's that's how this is going this little hat does not have a video but if you want to learn how to make this cute little guy the ears were made by pulling up the yarn uh, pulling up the fabric and just stitching the ears down so kind of pulling and making the ears and then instead of cinching the top here, I left it flat. But if anybody's interested in that type of a beanie, let me know, leave a comment after the video is over. Um, am I going to do anything on a loom? So do you mean a knitting loom or on a weaving loom? So I'll wait for your answer on that. But I will zoom out just a little bit. If it's a knitting loom, no, probably not because I don't have any knitting looms at this time. Maybe in the future I will. So I made this really fun, soft, fuzzy hat. This is my cupcake a knitting loom. Yeah, so at this point right now I don't own any knitting looms. But, um, you know, that's not to say I won't own knitting looms at some point. <laughs> so this is my cupcake hat. This is on the, on the channel as a video. If it was done with the Super Saver brushed for the white frosting part and the Lion Brand Heartland yarn in the Sequoia color, the Super Saber brushed was the cream and the rose was done as its own video. So I have, I have roses. 
I did I did these roses on the video. So if you're interested in learning how to do knitted roses, I um, the pattern that is in the description for these roses actually does work on hand knitting needles also. So if you want to uh, try that pattern out, it works on hand knitting needles. And let's see, let's see. Ooh. Oh yeah, I've got another, um, it's not on the channel yet and I don't know if anybody would want to see it, but I will show you my sweater vest that I made. I'll show you the sweater vest here. I'm going to switch back. So the sweater vest that I made right here, it is Stephanie stripping down on the no I'm not all I'm did was take my sweater off I have been busy yes I've been very busy with my knitting machines so this is the sweater the sweater vest it was made here let's put my arm through this way it was made with one full panel and then two a small panel under the arm on this side and a small panel under the arm on this side right here and then one continuous panel that starts here in the front and goes up over and back down to the front so it is just a kind of a shrug, kind of a, you know, kind of a vest that just sort of keeps your back warm, keeps your front warm, and keeps your neck warm. Get my sleeves organized again. There we go. And then I made, I, I did put this extra binding along the bottom and pockets. This was not done from a pattern. This was me just playing around. I saw a picture of this gray waffle fabric um, sort of sweater vest type of thing. I think it was made with uh, crochet fabric or with just some waffle fabric. And it's been all over the internet. And when you click it, you can't get to anything. So uh, yeah, it's... It, it's nice because you know it it's cozy but it's not too warm just when you want to have something to layer over something else and what I did for the neck because when it was first you know when I when I first made it all of this fabric that's here was all just free floating and laying back, but not attached. And so I sewed it all down, all along the front. And I don't have a video edited of it. I do have a video, actually lots of video. Uh, so I have to edit it down and it will sort of, it won't be a complete tutorial on how to make it. It will be sort of a, what I did to make it and a few little clips of stuff that was uh, in process. So while I was making the panels, because these were done in flat panel mode, 15 inches wide, except for the small panels that are under the arms. And those were like 15 stitches wide. You love the two tone. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's kind of fun to, um, to play with stuff like that. So this is, um, it was all done with Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and sit back down um there we go and uh so it was the lion brand wool ease yarn that you can pick up from the lionbrand.com company or company website you can get it on any of the um craft stores craft websites you can pay way too much for it and buy it on Amazon. Um, <laughs> just saying. So, oh, something else. So a couple other things that I've made. And then we'll get to the 
what I am. Um, there we go. And then I'll get to the what I'm working on because I'm working my way down through the pile. So this is my studio assistant, this little kitty cat. <laughs> so there we go. This little kitty cat uh, is actually just, and it doesn't have a video yet by me. Um, if you go and you look around for Knit Kitten, you'll find the Waldorf cat. And it's made from a square of knitted fabric and um, and a and a like a little ball of knitted fabric, and that's all it is. And then a little um, I just knitted an extra bit for his tail. So I made this one first. It was made from a flat square that you fold in diagonally, so you bring the points together in the middles. And then you just stitch it and put a little stuffing inside if you need to. But because my square was actually a rectangle and it was really too big, I folded the rectangle in half to make a square and then folded it to make this little cat. Hello, Livy Lydia. You love the kitties. <laughs> nice to nice to meet you. Um, so this little kitten kitten, super, super easy, and I did it all on the knitting machine. This just happens to be the backside of the knitted fabric. So when you knit on the knitting machine, it makes stockinette, right? So the inside of the stockinette is the reverse stockinette, which is all pearl side. You need to see that video. So I need to make the I need to make the cat video. Excellent, because I want to make another cat. Um, make the big cat or make the little cat? This is kind of like mama cat and baby. They've been playing on my desk. This one was made with a square panel. So it was the full width or full, you know, 45, 45 stitches around to make a big flat panel. And I made it square and then did the folding in and stitching. This one is stuffed. And then I did a tube on the on the big machine also. And this one was like, I did it um, extra long and doubled it inside and then closed the tube so the stuffing can't show through. Embroidered the face. And I did not do the separate ears. All I did was the pinch ears. And that's what I did on this little guy too, is I just pinched the fabric and sewed it to make those ears. You're a cat mommy. Okay, so hey Lydia, I'm so glad that you caught the live stream too. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so these guys are so much fun. And then I put a little white rose and made a uh, just a little leaf to go along with it. And this was done with the Lion Brand Wool Ease, but it's got some sparkle. I don't know. You can't really see the sparkle on the camera. Oh, maybe every once in a while it sparkles. So we've got that. I have another little cat um, that was that was made from my uh, lovey bear type. Um, the lovey bear. The lovey bear lesson. This one. It was made just like that, but it was made smaller, and it is just a little like little lovey kitty little pocket pal kitty and it can also be a little cover for you know small jar and then it can stand up on your desk or on a shelf isn't that fun I love stuff like this I mean I am just having so much fun with this and I am so glad that you're here to have the fun with me <laughs> um oh something else now don't have a lesson for them yet but I am working out how to do like, I want to figure out like five different kinds of mushrooms and then do a lesson on all of the different mushrooms. But look at that. Aren't those so cute? So, and it goes way up inside. So it's, you know, it's kind of like you can have it looking different ways. 
You can flip up an edge, make a whole mushroom diorama with it. And then I was working on an idea for a, like a basket, which is basically just a short hat doubled over. And um, then I did a slip stitch edge to firm it up a little bit. It would also be a really cute little, like a little kid's bucket hat. I can't figure out how to do a big person bucket hat yet because a big person bucket hat, I would have to do an added brim. But isn't that so cute? So it works as a basket. It works as a It would work as a baby hat. <laughs> Almost anything will work as a baby hat. But there you go. There's the basket of mushrooms. So I'm still working on the mushrooms. But if anybody's interested in mushroom lesson, make sure and leave me a comment afterwards and let me know that you want to see mushrooms on the channel. And I think that is pretty much... Oh. Oh. Leaning over here. There we go. So I I made this turtle. And as soon as I was done making it, somebody bought it. <laughs> so I don't have it. So I need to make another turtle. So I've got all the parts. And I will start stitching them together and make the the cute little the cute little turtle. I'm just gonna kind of hold them together right here. But I found the, the little foamy curl, the foamy curlers at the dollar store. So I can make it so he'll be able to stand up. See, look at that. His little legs will, will bend. So he'll be able to stand. And that's just these, let's see if I can get it to pop out there. Just the foam rollers that you can get at the dollar store. They come in like packs of six or eight for a dollar twenty-five. Cut them in half for the legs and put them inside. This is a double layer of of fabric that was mattress stitched. I do have a short on how to do mattress stitching if you're interested. The short is in my shorts list. So just click on my channel and go to the shorts list. But I need to get this little turtle stitched stitched together <laughs> uh i am so so happy that i'm doing this and that you guys are here do along with me because you know ah oh, so much fun i need to clear some clear the decks here i think mama cat and the baby are going to stay on the table though and we've got the the cowl this is the ban the bandana cowl that I made in the video. So 10 minute cowl. It really only took 10 minutes to do the knitting for it. It starts at the point and then is worked flat panel all the way up to here. So it would be worked in a flat panel all the way up to here and it's done with increases. Increases are way easier to do than decreases. And then finally, you get down to three stitches and you cast on those three stitches and then work in a tube as far as you want to go. And then, oh my gosh, I'm going to put it on and then I'll flip the camera as soon as I find my, my mouse again. <laughs> All right, we're going to, there we go. So look at that soft. Oh my gosh. So incredibly soft. This is with the brushed acrylic super saver, really inexpensive yarn. I think I got the whole, you know, got a couple different skeins when they were on sale for like $2.99 a scale, a scale, a skein. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, this is, and this is a video on the channel. It does, you know, if you uh, are a hand knitter, you could knit this by hand. Just, I would say, do it on circular needles, even when you're only doing 
you know, the first three stitches and then you're increasing on each end as you go until you join it into a circle. And then you can, you know, make your circle as big as you want. You can keep increasing as big as you want. And it's so much fun. <sighs> oh my gosh. So you are, uh, oh, the last thing that I have to, to show is... Look at that owl tea cozy. Isn't that adorable? I don't have a video on him yet, but if you want it, leave that comment and let me know because this little tea cozy is so easy. The tea cozy was actually done as a tube in flat panel or, you know, it, basically it was a tube like like that, but then doubled over, mattress stitched on the sides to leave room for the handle and the spout. And then I just added the buttons and the beak. And that beak is that woven beak that I had done before. Definitely want one on the tea cozy. Oh, excellent. Let's see. You've only ever crocheted a granny square afghan. You know what? Granny square, square afghans are awesome to crochet. Um, you can you can do, I bet you, you could, well, you could do this with, uh, wouldn't that granny square owl be really? Wow. Okay, maybe I'm going to have to pull out the crochet hooks and do a granny square owl. This little guy is so, so fun. And... I um, made this on the 48 pin Centro um, knitting machine. I have to tell you, <laughs> my husband, so he got me the, oh yeah, I've got the other owl too. He, he went and got the, tw the 22 pin Addy. This absolutely rocks the socks off of the Centro 22. But the Centro 48, I still really love it, but he bought for our Valentine's gift to each other, the 46 pin Addy King size. So it's still sitting in the box. It hasn't even had its legs attached yet. <laughs> So yeah, I will get that, um, the, the owl tea cozy. That's awesome because I need to have a couple more projects go up soon. Uh, this little owl, he was done in flat panels, just, um, you know, standard, just flat panel. And I did him, he's only 20, is he 20? Let me see how many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, he's like, um, I did him on the big machine, but I only did him in tw like 20, um, 20 rows or 20, n not 20 rows, 20, um, 20 stitches, 25 stitches. I think he started at 25 stitches and, um, I did do decreases and increases on this one, but he doesn't have to be. I, I think I like my little tea cozy one better that had less of a neck. And since there was no real interest in the, in the yarn, I made him a little uh, wings <laughs> with the Super Saver stripe that has the black in it. It's the neon stripe. Hello, Travine. Welcome. Oh, excellent. I am so, so happy you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this little guy uh, is not on the channel either, but I think that if I was doing an owl, you know, when I do my next owl, which is going to be another tea cozy owl. Um, let, me, let me see. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. Did you miss me? <laughs> so I did make a little stuffy 
that was done flat panel and I did this on the on the small machine so I did this on a 22 pin machine and um, folded it and all I did was stuff it more at the bottom than at the top it's the same number of stitches you can see the stitches are just stretched out here across the bottom and because it's two layers because I did it as a tube same way that I did the tea cozy I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I'm pretty, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm excited about this so much. I'm just really having a lot of fun. Um, but this little owl, the yarn that I used is the same yarn that I used on the Tea Cozy, and that is the Red Heart Super Saver Stripe, and it's the Latte Stripe, so it's the coffee colors. All of those lovely coffee colors. Then, This little bunny just sort of uh, came out of nowhere. As it was a tube, it was made. Um, basically, I made a tube like I did this, and I did a uh, drawstring. So, if you're interested in how I do drawstrings for the heads and necks, the Pocket Pal is the video to check out. So, I did that, and if you look at it like this it's the same as this little guy it's just shorter see and for this one what i did is i closed it up flat across the bottom and then stitched up between i was i was going to make it into little legs so let's hide the the stuff in the middle i was going to make it into little legs but then some for some reason I had flipped it over and went oh my gosh it's a bunny <laughs> so I had to make a fluffy bunny tail and I you know embroidered the little eyes on and the nose this is a doubled over t the whole thing is a doubled over tube though so it's one long tube that the end was closed and then I used the drawstring around the neck and then did the, you know, after putting stuffing in the head and then put stuffing in the body. This cute little, the, the bunny, you know, the, the bunny holder, you could put, you know, little things in the bottom and use the bunny as like a stopper in the, in the container. Isn't that sweet? This is just a card, a piece of cardboard that's been bent into a circular shape with another piece of cardboard in the bottom just to give it a little bit of support. So if you're interested in that, I can make a video. I love making videos. I love sharing um, things that I learned that I figured out. And then the the little cover on it one it looks when you hold it this way it looks like a like a 1940s hat <laughs> but if you flip it over this direction and stretch it just a little bit you can push the fabric inside i would if i was doing this for real to make you know if I had done it this way to, or done it to figure out how to make the little container to begin with, I would have made the tube longer so it would fit all the way down in the bottom and be drawn together like the top of a hat. So it would be completely enclosed. But there we go. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I, I have lots of ideas. They're all running through my head. But I want to show you what I'm working on. I just keep moving all of my stuff around. Um, I do have to get the teapot off of here. Oh, these socks were made before, but just to show, yeah, I do know how to knit by hand. <laughs> so these are some socks. I still have to to stitch the ends in, but these are all hand knitted. Little hand knitted socks. So 
just as a by the way, if anybody was, you know, was wondering, I am going to switch my desk or switch my camera around on my desk. Oh, first up though. Well, no, we'll, we'll switch the camera, switch the camera. I'm working on this little kitty cat and I just started working on this one today. So it was basically like the doll, the pocket pal, basically like the pocket pals. I, I did get some of the safety eyes and it will be a kitty cat with the pinched ears and the flat top sewn here on the top. And then I have all of the extra leg, the yarn on these. So it looks a little bit funny right now, but you know, we've got two legs that will be sewn in. Uh, the bottom is not sewn shut yet because I'm going to sew it in, sew them in like that to the inside. And then this little one has arms that are separate. And then made out of the same fuzzy baby brunette, um, baby velvet type yarn, I made this panel. And the panel, what it's going to be is it's going to go around and then come up and be stitched to make a cute little hat that will go over the arms. Like that with her little legs. And I think it is going to be absolutely adorable. I did when I was knitting it on the knitting machine, I put two strands of this kind of purple and blue and I just knit it in with the, with the actual yarn. So it's not, um, I didn't hand stitch it on afterwards. I just knit it in and this is so, so soft. I think it's going to be absolutely adorable. And I, I did not record the um, the making of this, so I'm going to have to make another one. Oh darn! <laughs> um, the only thing I'm I'm debating on is if I'm going to do the the legs so that the toes are kind of coming together like this, or put the legs in so that the toes are kind of forward or coming upwards. I haven't decided that yet, but that. Oh, and I did, I did do a little tail for her also. So she'll have her little, her little tail coming off the back after her legs are on. And then, and then my big project. Now this is my big project. This is the one that I am really quite excited about. I'm really, I have to zoom all the way out for, whoops, all the way out for you to be able to see it. Move my coffee cup. <laughs> I haven't even stopped to take a sip of coffee. Wow. So just clearing things out of the way. I am making a raglan t-shirt. See this? This is a raglan t-shirt that um, my husband and I, we got on our um, honeymoon. So we bought these when we went to Canada for our honeymoon back in 1984. So that tells you how long I've been married. <laughs> and then, um, but what I wanted to do is use it kind of as a base for figuring out, sorry, getting my head in the way here for figuring out how to make the raglan t-shirt. Now this is, this is his, he was, he, he had like an ex, this is like an extra large t-shirt. So I'm not, I don't need to make it my shirt quite that big. But what I've done here is I made a panel 
that started at this edge and I increased on both sides until I got as far as I could on the machine, which is 45 stitches wide. I need a little bit more room. So I did two panels that were just increased on one edge each. And now those are stitched on. And I found, hello, Mark from work. Anybody interested, MWB Arts is my husband. <laughs> and I found out that my bandana 10 minute cowl actually will work for the sleeves. Look at that. So the bandana cowl will work for the sleeves on my raglan t-shirt. Now this that this was my second one that I had made and I made it a little bit bigger. This was the first one that I had made, but for illustration purposes, it'll work. And look at that. Isn't that going to be fantastic? Now this is my, I'm working it out. I'm using whatever yarn I have. Um, this colorful yarn was actually the Ma um, Lion Brand Mandala bonus bundle in the colorway Giant. And I went and I rolled off the, the colors into separate little skeins now. So I have that much. of the blues and purples like the the body i think i'll be able to get one more body out of these colors and i'm not sure these are the other colors that come in that colorway and i'm thinking i might be going to the pink and purple to make the sleeves I'm not really interested in the bright yellow or the green so I, I'm thinking that for the sleeves, I will, excuse me, I will probably end up going to whatever's left of the, of the blue, then um, to the purple and then to the pink. We'll see. I, we'll see. I mean, gee whiz, who knows what we're going to end up with, right? Um, if you haven't already clicked the like button, I would really like it if you could click the like button and make sure that you share these videos. Uh, you know, you never know when something is just going to spark an idea for someone else. I love watching vlogs. I've been watching uh, so many knitting vlogs, people just showing their, their works in progress, their finished objects, all of that. So if you uh, want to share, please do. <laughs> But I wanted to show you, I, this is very crinkly paper, so pardon the crinkles. I had made a pattern off of the actual t-shirt that's underneath here. More crinkles, sorry. <laughs> so that I could measure and figure out kind of what I needed to do for my knitted fabric. I did do a giant swatch on my knitting machine. You can swatch on a knitting machine. And then I just took it out when I was done so that I'd have the yarn available to use. But um, because I didn't block it, I just made it large enough that I was able to check out the, uh, the knit size on the on the actual fabric using the yarn that I am making it with. And I was able to measure and I found that my knitting machine knits three and a half um, stitches per inch and five and a half rows per inch. So I was able to kind of figure out how many rows and how many stitches I was going to need to make the t-shirt. <laughs> now, who knows if that's going to work out or not in the final project. 
it might be that it ends up being a little bit small and hopefully I just lose weight, right? But I hope that you guys have been enjoying this little uh, wander around through all of my finished objects of the last five weeks. I have been really, really inspired to continue doing more. I thank you guys so much for all of your, <laughs> for all of your uh, suggestions and ideas. And Gina, I just saw your suggestion for a tote bag. Yes, I have a tote bag in mind that I'm going to be making. And um, I'm going to try and do something that I haven't seen somebody else do and hope that I'm actually coming up with something that people want to make and want to use. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But keep your eyes open. If you are interested in what I'm doing, please click that subscribe button and turn on all your notifications so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And I am really, really happy that you joined me today. Leave me questions in the comment section below the video. And remember all of the links for the finished objects that I have videos for are listed in the description below the video also. Thank you guys. Remember to take care of yourself, do something creative, and be kind out there. We'll see you again soon.